Hello, everybody. I'm Samrat Saha. I am a customer engineering manager for Google Cloud, and I'm based out of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Thank you for taking the time to join me today to understand our perspective on how to deliver a flawless UX for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So in our journey today, we were, we we're going to cover a few things. For instance, we're going to go over, you know, what is Black Friday, Cyber Monday? What does success mean? What is UX CX? You know, how do you prepare for it? How do you execute on it? And a wrap up. And we're going to go over quite a few concepts today. And the uh, goal is to give an idea as to how complex an undertaking can be and how partnerships can help you solve for a business critical time period. So I want to start off with uh, design for failure. All things fail, no matter how strong you make it, it is going to fail. It's how you recover that makes all the difference. And this is something that people find odd, you know, coming from a, you know, an organization that's known for reliable services, but that's precisely sort of the mind shift or the paradigm shift that you need to get used to. Things fail and how you recover define how successful you become. So just to put things in context, okay, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, it's one of my favorite holidays. Right? I love Thanksgiving for retailers, right? it's a really important time period. For instance, in 2019, uh, you know, Black Friday saw sales that was over $7 billion in digital sales. It is up 14% from 2018. And in 2019, Cyber Monday had greater than $9 billion in sales. That was a 19% jump from the previous year. So to put things in perspective, right, that's a substantial amount of sales that's happening over a very compressed time frame. Right? You're literally going from Thanksgiving to the Monday after. And you're seeing that much sales come through during that time period. So BFCM, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, execution and impact, you know, when it goes well, obviously, you know, your sales go up, your revenue goes up, it's great for business. What happens when it goes sideways? What happens, let's say you have an outage for an hour, right? What is the impact on the brand? What is the impact on the customer relationship? What does a 1% impact mean? These are really important business questions that need to be answered, right? And this is where cloud can help. UX and CX, user experience, customer experience, what is it? Well, you know, a lot of people now have mobile phones, right? And a lot of people are exposed to the greatest, the latest and the greatest when it comes to, you know, how applications work, how websites work, you know, that's the user experience. So for instance, if you're shopping for something, right? and you decide to go and add three items to your shopping cart, right? Was that a smooth experience? Did the brand make you jump through hoops uh, to do that action? You know, how smooth was the overall transaction, right? A good user experience enables your users to achieve the tasks that they want to achieve, right? And customer experience is sort of the overall umbrella around it. It's not just the app, it's how you communicate with your customer. It is how they can get help if needed. So that's the overall sort of relationship, if you will. UX is very sort of specific, right? And uh, invariably, having a great UX can make the difference between making a sale versus not making a sale. So for instance, what does a one second delay mean to your website, right? Uh, a 1% delay can mean you know, around a 7% reduction in, con in conversions. Uh, it can mean a poor user experience for your users and that could also mean a loss in business, a move to a competitor. So UX and CX are pretty critical in terms of maintaining a relationship and making sure you, your users actually enjoy using your products, right? And after all, it's all about the user. So UX, CX during Black Friday, uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you know, the, the stakes go much higher, right? So for instance, if you're delivering a great user experience when it's not Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that's great. But can you give a similar experience when there's much higher load on the system? So for instance, let's say that uh, a person can go in and buy, uh, let's say, a pair of shoes, right? And the entire thing can be done with minimal disruption and the user loves it. Now, during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, let's say there are thousands of users trying to do the same thing at the same time. Can you del deliver the same experience that made your customer love your brand during a high stakes period? So that becomes really important. The stakes go up. The revenue potential is so much higher, but so is the business impact, right? If things go down, you know, how do you recover from that, right? 
what happens when let's say that you have users in the east coast and you have users uh, uh, in the midwest you know can you give similar user experiences to both sets of users because it wouldn't be right it wouldn't be a consistent experience with your brand if somebody say in milwaukee has a three times higher load time than somebody say in new york city All right, so these are considerations that become really important but again it amplifies so much more during black friday cyber monday you know, to help you understand this, to help you figure out what is important versus what is not important, uh, I would encourage you to, to think in terms of critical user journeys, right? So what is important to your user? What is important to your business, right? So for instance, a user for, you know, it might be really important to buy, say, crayons, right? So they can ship it to their niece in Florida, right? Now that could be super important. That user journey is really important. Now for your business, it might mean that you want to have a feedback survey uh, filled out. You know, because you get information, you can better your service, right? But to a user, that may not be as important. But there are zones of intersection between what's important to your user and what's important to your business. And when you figure out where it intersects, it can help guide you in terms of where do you need to put more resources to harden those systems. So for instance, checkout is super important to your business and your user because the user wants to go buy stuff, have it shipped, and complete it with minimal disruption. For a business, it is extremely important too because that's straight line to the money. Right, so you can figure out what the intersection points are to to help guide you, design your systems, harden your systems, and provide the best user experience for a business critical time period. So why is it so hard? I, I kind of alluded to this previously, right? You know, during Black Friday Cyber Monday, you can see up to three x to four x, three times to four times the traffic than you would normally, and there is no. It need not be a steady pattern. It could be very spiky traffic. So you might see a whole bunch of users, you know, hit your systems within the first hour of your sales starting up, right? Or it could be something like you have several spikes because your promotion's going out every other hour, right? So the traffic is very spiky, right? And it is substantially larger than what you normally find outside of Black Friday Cyber Monday, right? Uh, so with that in mind, you know, how do you, how do you account for that? Uh, traditionally, what you would do is you accept compromises. You would say, you know what? Black Friday Cyber Monday is super critical to me. Right? In order to meet that demand, I'm going to over-provision my resources throughout the year. So now you're paying for redundancy for the rest of the year. Or you compromise and say, you know what, I'm willing to take the hit. All right, I'm going to sort of under-provision, knowing that it has a slightly negative impact on my customers. Right? But that's a compromise. And that's why you know, having your resources in, in the cloud, having a cloud-native sort of mentality towards developing your solutions can really help. Is, are your resources elastic? Can they grow and shrink with the usage? Uh, are they you know, redundant across different regions? You know, what happens when, say, a region goes down, right? Uh, these are the kind of things that you have to bring to the table when you're trying to address a very distributed user base, right? Who have high expectations on a, a user experience because that's kind of what you've grown to build with your users. You've built a, a relationship that you want to protect and nourish, right? And with all that comes in stuff like, you know, you have a distributed system, you know, how, how, do you, how does the database handle asset transactions, right? How do you guarantee that consistency? These are certain things that start cropping up, which are not normally seen in traditional monolithic application, not normally seen in traditional on-prem uh, deployments, right? So these are things that make it much harder, and it usually takes a completely different approach to be successful in the cloud. But the payoffs are there. The payoff is what? The payoff is, again, a great user experience. I cannot stress this enough. What the goal should be is provide the best user experience so that a user can enjoy working with your brand and building a relationship out with you. So what does it look like, you know, kind of internally, right? Uh, and this is fairly sort of uh, standard in terms of how people approach, you know, how teams approach approaching peak, all right? You have capacity plans. You've got to figure out how much capacity you're going to need, all right? You have load testing, you have you know, tabletop exercises. So this is stuff like you sit down and figure out, okay, our database has gone down. What do you do then? All right. Let's say you decide you're going to simulate a network outage to the East Coast. What do you do then? How do you fail over? Right. Then obviously you have Black Friday, Cyber Monday. All right. And sometimes it's code, depending on the organization you are. Sometimes you institute a code freeze, sometimes you don't. All right. Uh, it, it, it depends on your approach to how you develop products, right? You know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and then, you know, tapering towards December, you start scaling down, all right? 
So you understand your capacity, you scale up, you test, deliver, and scale down. So all this is a very, very compressed timeline of very sort of a lot of activities going on just to deliver on that short time frame. All right, so breaking down, first of all, definition of success. What does success mean, all right? This is a business critical objective. Like what does it mean for a business in order to be successful? Once you have that, you can start figuring out what do you need to do to deliver on that, right? Then you have core activities, you know, load testing. Do you test uh, to three times to four times the amount of load that you normally get, right? Tabletop exercises, which I just went through, you know, you know, do you simulate sort of different failure scenarios, right? And you figure out what are the lines of communication, you know, how do you respond to outages, right? Disaster recovery testing, right? This is something Google is famous for, all right? Uh, this is where you figure out, you know, things, again, things are going down. How do you recover? How quickly do you recover? Where do you recover to, you know? Failover. Let's say that you have uh, regions, compute regions in East and West, right? So like argument, let's say uh, East goes down, right? How do you fail over so that your users on the East Coast are not significantly impacted? There is a degradation of service, that's for sure, right? The latency went up. But how do you make sure that they still can use your service? And that's key, right? Rollback strategies. What happens when you decide to push an update out? Like, can you roll back smoothly? Let's say that the update caused a bug that was not caught uh, until it was in production. Sometimes these things do happen. Can you actually roll back and, uh, you know, with confidence, right? Communication. You know, how do you communicate failures? How do you communicate outages, right? What is that internal business process, right? And most importantly, who decides? Who's the decision maker? So let's say that you decide that you're going to fail over from central to west, right? For the sake of argument. You know, who's going to pull that button? Who's going to push that button, rather? Who makes that final decision? Are those chains of communication, have they been clearly demarcated? And are teams empowered to make those business critical decisions, right? So again, fairly complex, but for really good reasons. Now, do you have the architecture deliver at peak, all right? Uh, is your application or your application, are they monoliths? Was it distributed services, microservices? You know, what kind of cloud design patterns are you using, right? Uh, are these multi-region systems? Are these distributed systems? High availability, disaster recovery, right? Uh, four nines, five nines reliability, right? You've got to figure out what your error budget is. You've got to figure out, you know, how much effort are you willing to put in to give a certain kind of reliability, right? Because nothing's going to be 100% reliable. You've got to figure out your trade-offs, right? Uh, implication of the persistence layer, the implication of the compute layer, right? the implication of scaling. So again, the architecture that can help you deliver for a peak becomes really, really important. So this is a sample architecture right? of, uh, you know, let's say an e-commerce-ish application. Right? And there's certain things that are pretty common in this kind of architecture. But the key is, you know, you start with the user. You have users distributed, say, uh, across a nation or globally, right? Uh, and the fundamental part is you route a user, if you will, to the resources that is required to complete their user journey that's closest to the user, right? In this case, what you're seeing is you have region one on the left, you have region two on the right, right? Connecting those two is a cloud load balancer on top. So think of it as a request coming in from the user, hitting the load balancer, which decides, should I send the user's request to, you know, the east, or should I send the user's request to West, region one or region two, all right? Within those regions, you have compute resources. In this case, you have GKE, all right? You have, uh, essentially that's, you know, more of a microservices kind of approach, right? Then you have a persistence layer, your Cloud SQL or Memcache or data store, whatever uh, is important to your business, right? Underlying all that, you have an analytics layer, right? So BigQuery and the, the the, the, the architecture is a distributed architecture. It's a highly available architecture, right? If region goes down, can you uh, resume services? In this architecture, you can, right? Uh, is this repeatable? What if you decide to stand up a third region, right? This architecture is modular enough that you can repeat what was successful in both regions and stand up another region, right? Uh, this allows you to also test, you know, pushing out updates. So again, it's a very distributed architecture, right? And it gives you the flexibility to scale up. It gives you the, the safety to withstand regional outages, right? It also gives you the, the template, if you will, to expand out as your business grows.
Now, this is a fairly, you know, these are some of the services that you would have in a traditional sort of e-commerce application, right? As you can see, you have a whole bunch of digital services. You have search, taxonomy, you know, a whole bunch of services that are required for a user to be successful, right? And you have other services that are non-digital, you know, like shopping, delivery, and stuff like that. But again, what I'm trying to impress upon you is to deliver a great e-commerce uh, application. There are a whole bunch of services that need to be built out, right? And there's a lot of cloud native design pattern that you've got to uh, you know, implement to be successful, right? Especially because, again, are your services elastic enough? Is your infrastructure elastic enough, resilient enough to handle high loads, right? And to allow for disaster recovery to happen if things go badly and also scale down once you've executed on peak. So this is a topic all by itself, right? I did want to mention it, right? Site reliability engineering, right? This is very user impact driven, right? This is more about, you know, for a infrastructure, uh, for somebody who maintains, say, hardware, right? For the sake of uh, an example, or somebody who is developing an application, right? Things of interest might be, you know, what is the CPU percentage, you know, uh, utilization percentage, right? Now, those are interesting things are, and are important pieces of information that help you solve for problems, right? But what is the impact on the user, right? If you don't start approaching it from user impact, for instance, let's say that you want a user to be able to browse for the products on your website, right? And you want the search results to be returned within, say, one second, you know? Now, if that is impacted, now that's a user level impact, right? And that can help guide the business better in terms of solving for a better system that is providing search results, right? Now, the underlying cause, right, might be, let's say, CPU utilization, right, maybe, right? But if you're not guided by the impact on users, right, it becomes very hard to figure out what is important for users and what is important for business, right? Uh, I would encourage you to go into SRE and get a lot of resources uh, uh, on, at Google Cloud to help you understand you know, where does SRE fit in and how do you de develop and deliver reliable systems at Velocity so that your developers, your product teams can make cool stuff, right? But they can also deliver stuff rely, uh, reliably and maintain reliably as well. Common threads of success. So in, in my time at Google, right, I've seen some teams be very successful in delivering a great, great uh, Black Friday Cyber Month, right? And some of the things that I've noticed, right, that my teams as well as noticed, right, that helps people be successful, you know, they are clear objectives, communication, right? Great communication, people know, you know, your objectives are communi clear, communicated clearly, right? Uh, the teams are empowered to make decisions, right? Uh, and this trust, you know, they embrace cloud native thinking. Again, it's designed for scale. The elasticity that's important to deliver on those experiences is really important. Then the power of partnerships. Leverage your partners, right? They have helped solve some of these problems for others, right? And more importantly, it is in their interest to help you be successful. So it's sort of the all, you know, embracing approach that is defined, that is uh, sort of, you know, guided by overall objectives, business objectives, user objectives. Success in GCP, as you can see, we have, a, you know, quite a few of our customers uh, who have partners with, uh, partner with GCP to be successful. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that we can help out you achieve your uh, business goals. Thank you.